Good morning, folks. This is Dawson fishing with Squirrel. This morning, I'm going to do a walk around on my fishing pontoon boat, Squirrel. Hope you guys enjoy it. Let's get started. Okay, folks, so here we are. This is Squirrel. It is a 21 foot tracker party barge. It did not have the full bimini top. It only had the main section at the back and the canvas on it was really worn. So I called Dalco who makes the canvas for these tracker party barges and I ordered a full enclosure. It came with the front canopy, all the side curtains, the new top. It Dalco does not make the frames for these boats anymore, the front frames. I, I had a back frame. I didn't even ask him about that, but this is 2004. So what I did was there's a carver industry that makes these bimini top frames and canvas. And I just ordered a new bow frame and I cut it down to fit. So I had to do a lot of measuring, a lot of cutting, a lot of fitting on this piece. It did not come like this. And unfortunately, Dalco, they wouldn't they didn't have any to sell. They don't make it anymore. They make the canvas. You can still buy the canvas, but they do not make the frame. So that's one thing that I've done on this boat. But on the starting with the front, I have a a light bar on the t on the bottom underneath for docking. It had little small docking lights on the side of it. I took those off and added that one light bar. So that makes it nice when you're coming into a dock. On the very front, I've got a Minn Kota. Tarova 112 pound thrust 36 volt trolling motor. It's got the spot lock, jog, you can set a route, all that, all that fancy stuff on it. It makes it really nice. A lot of times I don't even anchor. I just deploy that and I start fishing. It's got the quick release on it. You see the little lock there? And it sits it up high enough to where when it's stowed, I have to tie my door back. I don't have enough clearance to close the door on it. So when I deploy the trolling motor, I can close my little front door on the boat. So when we board the boat, I've got, this is a Minn Kota puck for my trolling motor. This is how it knows the direction so that when I do a spot lock, um, or either I do the jog feature where I go left five feet, right five feet, forward, back. That's what allows the uh, GPS signal to, to locate the boat. This is just a storage bin. I still have to cover these aluminum tops with carpet. I haven't done that, but I've got my little five inch depth finder in here that I, I still use. I've had that for years. And then I've got some tow ropes and also has some bungee straps and stuff like that. On the port side, the same little compartment, but it's actually a live well. I could use it for a live well. I rarely do. You can see I use it for net storage. And also, um, I have a bilge pump hose that I can just fill up my, my bait tank and empty my bait tank. So I just use that for storage. And you can see I've got my my bait tank and this is a super bait tank this gentleman has been making these bait tanks for years and years this this tank is over 20 years old it's a craigslist fine i didn't have a filter system in it and mr ron vest who makes these bait tanks actually made the filter system for me you can see i've got my different stickers here so far on it they got the muddy river and palmetto cats and tackle bandit and got Mr. Lyle Catfish Weekly. This is a 40 gallon. Got the one ton fishing club for life. And I got Team Old School and Dale's Tackle. So those are a few stickers that I have so far. But I use this when I'm striper fishing. And it pretty much stays on the boat all the time. I've got a pump that I can pump water in. There's no drain on it. So I can pump water in, pump water out. I can keep gizzard chat alive, I can keep blueback herring alive, and it works great. So on the front of the boat, I have four monster rod holders. They are the zero to 33 degree. 
I use those mainly when I'm striper fishing. And I do a lot of night fishing. So I'll go up on Lake Joe Cassie and I'll do lake trout. I've got a sodium light. I'll show you my setup later on it. But I've got a sodium light and a Honda generator that I use to power up and bring in the bait fish when I'm doing the striper night fishing or if I'm planning on doing late night fishing trip. In that bucket's my couple of extra cast nets. They're actually my eight footers. And then you walk back and you got a helm and it's your standard helm. I've got a trash can right here, a couple of cup holders. I've got a normal gauge cluster for, for my motor. Of course, fuel gauge, so just standard helm. This boat had a captain's chair and I went with a flip-flop seat. The reason I did that is because I was, wasn't gonna go back. We had an L-shaped bench that was in here. I only added a little four-footer. I thought about taking and getting my little L-shape recovered, uh, but that was like 1,300 bucks for a little section that would have added about a one-person seat and just minimal storage, so I didn't go that route. I just ended up buying an aftermarket seat here and the only other seat that I purchased was the flip-flop. I ordered the flip-flop because I was cutting down on my storage and I can store all my fishing stuff in this one. So when I say fishing stuff, I'm talking about my planer boards, I've got my lights, uh, I have inverters in here, I've got my scales, anything to do with the fish i got my registration and a dry box that's right here things like that so it's just extra storage and on top of the extra storage the nice thing about that flip-flop is i can flip that seat backwards it gives me a perfect view of my fishing area off the back of the boat so this little area was a changing station it had a foam pad, like a little sun deck. It was covered with upholstery and foam. Mine didn't have any foam or upholstery. And the plywood was really bad. So I went ahead and just, same carpet I used to cover the boat, I covered a piece of Advantech, three quarter inch flooring. And that gives me a flat area to use my musky board to measure the lengths of the fish. But one thing that I did with this little compartment is it was originally two feet forward. It went all the way to here. I moved it back to give me extra room on the back of the deck because I knew I was going to use this for fishing. Inside here, I have a three bank Minn Kota battery charger. My three batteries are under the battery charger this lifts out that runs the trolling motor are stored here all i have to do is plug it in keep those deep cycle batteries charged up the rest of the area i just use for storage extra life jackets drift socks tackle light musky board just things that i'm going to get a hold of and i need to readily available so i ordered this bait board from catfish and it's bigger than the normal bait board that they sell. I gave them a measurement. They made it custom exactly what I wanted. So I got a little bit higher sides. I made it this big just so I'd have more room to cut and work. And also, if I ever wanted to keep any fish and I wanted to fillet, this is big enough to fillet out any kind of fish that I'm going to keep as far as keepers go, which would be five pounds or less. This can handle that no problem. In order to clean it, I've got a welded up quick release pins all you have to do is pull this pin right here and then this bait board comes right up and out and makes it really easy to clean and on the back the other you'll see monster rod holders i have these two that are right here that are left hand thread so that they if i get a fish and i'm dragging baits they're not going to loosen up and swivel around. From here on around are right hand thread monster rod holders. All of these are the 3345s. And this setup is really good for fishing. Not so much for filming. I still got some work to do on how I'm going to set rod holders up. 
so that when I go live, you guys have a really good view of the rod tips. Still working on that, still doing some tweaking. And then when we step off the back of the boat, I've got a Suzuki 115 horsepower SS motor. Now when I bought this boat, it did not come with this motor. It came with a 60 horsepower Mercury. And the 60 ran well. It was a fine motor and did not have any issues with it. When we load down with a bait tank full of water, got my buddies on here fishing, you put all that weight in here, that 60 horsepower didn't do what I wanted to do. So I sold that motor and I bought this 115. And I saved a lot of money by rigging it myself. So this thing's got a six year warranty. It's brand new, it's a new motor. And then it also came with, or I had to purchase new controls. So the mercury controls, you, you have to get rid of. I let all that go with the motor. So I had to get a new shifter. And I had to put in a new starter and, and kill switch for the Suzuki. And uh, the Suzuki motor also comes with its own gauge. And it's also nice so that anytime it hits those service hours, it'll let me know. So I know when to do the oil changes on the motor. The gas tank on this boat is in the transom. It's out of the way. It's not taking up any space on the on the deck. So that makes it super nice. But overall, I'm really happy with the boat. I'm really happy with it. It's um it's not a brand new boat by no means. Um but I have about if you went out and bought a new fishing pontoon boat whether it be a tracker or any other brand, I have about a third of the cost of what a new one retails for. And I've got a brand new motor on it. It's solid. It's all around wide open for fishing. The front, I basically use for storage. I do all my fishing off the back unless I've got a buddy on the boat and we're doing an all-nighter on the lake trout fishing or striper fishing. That's the only time this is used for the fishing and the rod holders up here. But I do have the full enclosure that zips up the front all the way down the sides and also encloses the back. So that's it. It's been a long time coming. I just wanted to do this for you guys. It was it was a little bit of work. Still got a few things that I want to do to it. But this is Squirrel. This is how this is why my channel is named Fishing with Squirrel. If you like the video, please hit that like button. It'll really help me out. And also, if you like the content, consider subscribing. The little squirrel emoji, you can click on that and subscribe. And check out these other videos where you can see what this boat squirrel looked like before I did the restoration. Again, thanks so much. I appreciate it. We'll catch you next time on the water. God bless and have a good day.